So the other thing is we're on over um, 100 acres. So we go all the way out there and we go all the way over to the, uh, another street over on the other side. So a fairly large facility. So we have plenty of room to expand. So not only build this room building up, we can build a second building or a third building. So all the testing we have, our quality labs, we're gonna show you where we do all the analytical testing on inbounds and on finished product. Same as in the uh, nutritional and dietary supplements. Um, on the confectionery, we actually did the same thing in pet food. When I worked for Mars at Pedigree, we tested just like we did for food because you have to meet the same label claims uh, for pets. So strict guidelines everywhere in the, in the United States on right. how we follow that. Okay? So what I'm going to show you is the, uh, the first of our, our quality lab. Um, so uh, you can imagine, you know, like age 24, all of the uh, nutritional dietary supplements, all the testing, so all raw materials that come in, even though we get a certificate of analysis, we still test it and verify it, and then we make sure there's no bias. So everything gets tested for micro um, and analytical. And then when we finish the product, they take samples for every, every product that we make, every lot, and they do the same thing, then they do the finish uh, analytical and then the same with my to ensure that the integrity of the product meets the label claim as well as the safe, safety and the purity of the product that we're making. Um, so lab does, boy, I'm trying to remember how many hundreds of thousands of tests they do a year. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh yes, yeah. when you think about how many lots we make, so we have to do tests on every mm -hmm. lot, every raw material that comes in. So, and some may require 20 tests, depending on the analyticals and especially on finished product. So if you got 10 different vitamins or dietary supplements, you got to do all 10 different tests on that. And then all the different tests on all the different types of micro, right? Peak salmonella, E. coli, mysteria, all the different types of things to make sure everything is, is good. So we do a lot of the graphics here so that you can get kind of a, a view of what you're going to be walking out and seeing. So we're actually, because of the amount of testing going on in the lab, we're actually investing five million dollars. It's doubling the lab size. So we're in the middle of a lab expansion right now. The good thing is here, on average, we spend between twenty and thirty million dollars a year in capital, continuing to one enhance the building and do contingent improvement on new projects for new products if they launch any new products so sachet was a product where we did pouching we didn't have that three years ago so we've launched that so we continue to invest every year in improving our operation okay. so we're going to go around the corner get you a first view of yourself kind of what's behind this wall what's behind the wall and it's hard to see here because they're, they're under imagining, but when you get out in the open open space, you'll see how big it is. It's a shape. So one of the things we do have to do, we have to wash our hands before we go into the plant. So you, and how you do that, you step on that paddle and operate the water. So you can do this. If it doesn't work, Usually you can tap on this and then it come out the bottom. Is yours coming out? Imagine since we ship our product all over the world, we take our product and we actually put it in stability chambers that replicate whether it's in the U.S. or North America or whether it's Athens, the dry, you know, high temp, hot and dry, hot and very humid, Indonesia, or Rio. And that's so to make sure we understand what happens in these different countries 
what does because you know, bottles is a barrier but it will still absorb and so making sure that the shelf life and the integrity of the product doesn't get degraded over time and that's help us make sure we have the right shelf life across different because they may have to reformulate slightly different if it's in a different region to ensure that the product doesn't you know the shelf life stays at least at one or two years that it, it's designed for so we're constantly monitoring that
in a sampling room, which is then sent over to QC to be tested. So you got QA, quality assurance, and you got quality control, which is all the testing and micro. So you've got anything else that, I mean, most of the attributes and the following the right. specifications, following the, you know, the guidelines that we have to follow. Sensory, you know, making sure lock codes and everything are correct. Uh, in addition, we do all allergen swabbing uh, to make sure, you know, we have no cross contact of allergens, uh, you know, to keep everyone safe. So you imagine we got slurry, we got uh, milk, we got peanut, we got, we got sesame. sesame. So, and so after every clean, major cleanup equipment, they actually do the swabbing to make sure there's no detection of uh, any allergen. Because you don't want somebody who is allergic to milk and we're going. From a you know from a one product from milk to another soy product, all of a sudden there's a milk residue left, and so we really allergens in the U.S. is our number one recall by the FDA. When you go in and look on their website, the number one recall for companies is their allergen control program you know, because of the impact it has on people that are allergic to and we also do gluten free, so you know everybody that has yeah, yeah. insensitivities to gluten, you know we want to ensure that that. And it's a big one for us. Yes. Yeah. So I want you guys to take a look down. I know we're not going to go down there, but you may have seen it in the pictures. But this is actually where our soy and fructose transfer points are. So we hang these super sacks that usually weigh about a, a thousand kilos. And then basically they're hung up and then basically it goes into a charge vessel and then we vacuum transfer it up to the third floor where we use vessels on load cells to actually automatically weigh it out and then batch it so we get consistency every time. So it transferred up here and it's loading it, loading it and it goes up. Oh, you're at 400 kilos, top. And now we have that part of it. Done. So fructose and soy is all done uh, through our automated system. The other products are all done by hand because, as you can imagine, we may have 30 ingredients in a blend. Those have to be weighed out. So you have full containers, and then you got the small 25.6. Well, I got to weigh out you know, 22 kg container. I got to weigh out 3.6 kg. So we have a weigh room area that we do all the weighing, and they get it all together, and then this up on the third floor, and they'll layer it, and then they'll charge that on the third floor. Then you get your blend. That's the way uh, our our entire system, our ERP system, is set up under people. Yeah, we use metric for that. Yeah, we don't use pounds or it's in grams, kilograms, and uh, that's the way our ERP system is set up. And that's the way it's been everywhere I've worked. It's always been in people. Which is interesting. Manufacturing, that's the way it's set up. But we do everything else, you know, outside of here is in pounds or yeah. you know, storage in pounds. But all the manufacturing is set up in kilos. In the metro or the metro. So one of the other things you'll see way down in the blue, you see the little blue room down there on the floor? That's where we do all of our sampling. That's our sampling booth that we sample all of our raw materials. So what happens is they bring in the raw materials and I may have a thousand containers. And the way you sample is you take the square root of the number of containers that you in plus one. So if you had a hundred, you had ten plus one. And we sample eleven containers to get a kind of a good profile to make sure that the consistency of all the materials They do all their sampling down there and then sent to the QC lab to their final analytical and very thorough on everything we do. The CMA is nice, but we don't know if somebody at the other company may not have done something right. We're going to re verify that and meet our test. A very good process to make sure what you get is what it says is in that box. Yeah, you see a big red that hangs out super sack and you pick it up one yeah. feet up in the air. You have some of the uh, blue, which is tea, so yellow is powder. That would last you probably less than two days. So we burn through a lot of uh, blends every day. So we keep things moving and rotating through. You see what color is the yellow and blue? Yellow is our powders. The blue is our cleaning fluid. Then the green is the cream mix base. So we have to bring the cream mixes before we use them and blend them upstairs with the blending. So 
depending on the product, like H24, because of the di di dietary supplements, the vitamins, you have to do a premix before you can charge that into the blender. And that's just to make sure we got the uniformity to spread it. Into the window here. So remember when I talked about, you know, we do weighing and then what we call layering. So what happens is you've got all your bulky materials like soy and fructose, but then all the smaller components, we layer them into a tote. Basically full containers and weight containers. And then that becomes that super sack. You see the green one that went by, that's going to go up on the third floor and get charged into the blender. And that way you're not trying to open all this upstairs over a blender. You keep everything controlled down here. So it's just part of the uh, blending and batching process. So we have six of these rooms. We just built these four out. Two of them aren't finished yet, but that's where our future grow. So all this just got done in the last six months. You can look down there. These first two doors is all of our layering. You can come on down if you guys want to see it. This is what we do all of our weighing and layering. And then at the very end, you'll see the last three doors. That's actually where we discharge our blenders into those yellow super sacks. So once it's done, we charge, it's 1500 kilo batches and they get charged into two 750 kilo super sacks. And that's what we use for what we charge and put up above for our packaging. And you can see the size of it. So we just, you can see kind of where the floor changed. That was our expansion. So this was all warehouse space and we took it away and continue to expand our manufacturing. And then down at the other end, where our tea manufacturing is. So those are where we have our fluid bed dryers that granulates the tea to the right particulate size. Uh, so we have three fluid bed dryers that make our teas. And basically we can make about 45 batches um, a day. Now those batches are only 450 kilos. A little bit smaller than the 1500 in pound. And that's just the design of the bowl of a, a fluid bed dryer. Okay. But again, we run that operation 24 hours a day, five days a week. And we have room for one more. So we have a room that's already built out. We're just waiting to put the next piece of equipment in if we continue to see our volume grow. So again, you can imagine if we only, our biggest year was 80 million, we can do 150. We have 10 packaging lines. We're only using six of them. Wow. Right? So that gives you an idea of how much capacity we have. And we're only running two shifts. We can run three shifts. So, you know, for us, we have a lot of capacity in this site. We could definitely supply you, you know, with almost 100% growth of where we're at today.
give you guys a little extra. I'm gonna let you go down and see the uh, liquid line before we make our aloe. Yay! So, you gotta stay close to me here. Okay, hold up. why our teas are granulated so they're like in powder things because it's like it's not as usual for a lot of people and they always ask us and i try to explain it but i think it's gonna be good if they hear well, it from you we're talking about for tea why yes. is it granulated yes and actually that's to get your consistency of your particle size so when it dissolves so your uniformity so when you put it in there it actually should dissolve more efficiently. yeah because if you don't granulate it you may get solid particles and you may not so the whole pre-processing and then the granulation just helps 